In this video, we're going to walk you through how to set up the QuickBooks Online integration to easily and seamlessly export your documents from QuoteWorks directly into QuickBooks Online. The QuoteWorks integration includes the ability to export any document in QuoteWorks, such as an estimate, sales order, or invoice into QuickBooks Online. If an item on a document doesn't exist in QuickBooks, QuoteWorks will prompt you to create it. If a customer doesn't exist, QuoteWorks will create that customer for you also. The QuickBooks Online integration is available with QuoteWorks Professional and Corporate Editions. In order to set up and use this integration, you'll need to have an active QuickBooks Online subscription and an active QuoteWorks to QuickBooks Online subscription as well. To set up the integration, you'll first need to have QuoteWorks open and logged in as an administrator or user with admin rights, and you'll also need to be logged into QuickBooks Online. In QuoteWorks, click on Setup, then Options, and select Accounting. You'll see the QuickBooks integration option. Make sure your link type is set to QuickBooks Online. Additionally, there's an option for estimates, invoices, and sales orders selected accounting integration. Make sure this is also set to QuickBooks. And finally, if you're going to have QuoteWorks create purchase orders for you in QuickBooks, make sure that you have QuickBooks set as your purchase order integration. If it's not set, you can change these options by clicking the drop-down menu. Once you have these three options set, you're ready to start setting up the link between QuoteWorks and QuickBooks Online. So let's go ahead and click on the Setup Link button. When you click on that link, this will open the QuickBooks Link Setup page. This page is comprised of seven sections, and we're going to go through each section and the options available in them. The first section is Transaction. This is where we're going to set up some of the default settings for our integration. For Transaction Type, this is the document type that QuoteWorks will create in QuickBooks. So if you want QuoteWorks to create an invoice, estimate, or sales order, you make that selection here. For our example, I'm going to go ahead and select Invoice, but you can select whichever document is best for your organization. The next option is Job Name, Estimates Only. This setting allows you to determine how you want the job name to be auto-generated, and if so, using document number or document name. You can choose to continue using the QuickBooks Auto Numbering, where QuoteWorks will just automatically fill in the QuickBooks Numbering sequence, or you can start using the QuoteWorks Document Number instead. There's really no wrong answer here, just the one that makes the most sense for your company. For date of transaction, we're going to use either the document date or the date exported. Again, no wrong answers here. Just choose the one that matches the best for how your company operates and reports on your documents. If you'd like to add a customer message, you can also do that here. Note the Insert Macro button on the right of the field. This button will allow you to quickly add macros to your custom customer message to add personalization and to include field values from QuoteWorks. Then we're getting down to how QuoteWorks is going to handle specific items when the item is created or sent over to QuickBooks. If the item does exist, you have the option to update the cost and the price, or you can choose not to update it in the QuickBooks product list. For our example, I'm going to say go ahead and update the cost price. If the customer does exist in QuickBooks, we have the option to update or do not update. If the customer doesn't exist in QuickBooks, you can choose to create them automatically or be prompted to do so. If the ship to customer does not exist in QuickBooks, you can choose to prompt to create, create, or do not create. We also have our memo field. This is just adding a memo to the QuickBooks document, notifying you that the document was imported from QuoteWorks, and it provides you with the QuoteWorks document number, and also the document date it was exported. If you want to make any changes to this memo field, you can do so using various macros. You can remove the macros. It's up to you, so there's some flexibility with adjusting those settings. But for our example, we're going to go ahead and leave it as is. Email option gives you the ability to adjust the Send Later option in QuickBooks. This is set to send later by default, but you can deselect it if you wish. You can also choose to sync receive payments to QuickBooks Online. This will sync payments received in QuoteWorks into QuickBooks. If you're using QuickBooks Payments for receiving payments with Quote Valet, you'll actually want to uncheck this because you don't need the payment to be sent over a second time since it's coming through your QuickBooks payment account. Invoice slash estimate class allows you to set how you want to handle the assignment of classes to invoice and estimates. If you want to select a default, you can, or if you want to retrieve it from a specific QuoteWorks field, maybe a custom field, you can do that as well. For our example, I'm just going to go ahead and leave this blank. Under Purchase Order Integration, we'll want to set how we want to manage our POs. PO numbering allows us to use QuickBook Auto Numbering or the QuoteWorks PO number. Since we're going to be using the QuickBooks Auto Numbering for our invoices, we'll go ahead and use the same thing for our PO numbering. PO Item Billable Status will set the status for the items created in the QuickBooks Online PO. You can choose from Billable, not billable, and has been billed. The default setting will be not billable if not changed or left blank. Under Vendor Email Address, by selecting Use Vendor Maintenance Email Address on Purchase Orders, QuoteWorks will include the configured email address on the PO sent to QuickBooks. 
If we click OK to save our changes and go back to the QuickBooks Online Settings page, we'll see the next section to configure is Export Settings. This is where you specify what documents you want exported over to QuickBooks. If you'll see here on my window, I have a QuickBooks icon. When I click on that icon, that'll open a window of documents that are ready to be exported from QuickWorks to QuickBooks. On this step, I'm setting the criteria. So in our example, the most common setting is going to be we're looking for orders because you would not typically export quotes over to QuickBooks. And we're also looking for documents with the status equal to open. It means it's an order that's still open. Once the document's exported, QuickWorks will change the document status so that it no longer appears on that list. It might be something like closed. You can change these settings and defaults to whatever you'd like. These are just the recommended settings and the most typical settings. But again, you can adjust as needed. And what you were really trying to do is only display documents that are actually needing to be exported over to QuickBooks. Let's move on to the sales tax section. The sales tax section has quite a few settings. You have an option to select that you don't charge sales tax in QuickBooks, so if you don't, you can go ahead and check this. However, if you do charge sales tax, you'll be able to select from your default tax item for all estimates and invoices that are set up in QuickBooks. You can use the tax item from the QuickBooks customer if they exist, otherwise we'll use a default tax item. We can also, with this checkbox, set, use the default, that's set, but prompt for selection. If you want the ability to change it, you can. I do recommend it no matter which option you choose having this checkbox set because it gives you the flexibility to change it on the fly if you need to. Your sales tax codes, taxable and non-taxable, will be set here under the sales tax code section. This is pulling those fields directly from QuickBooks. We'll hit OK to save our changes and navigate back to the QuickBooks online setting page. The next section of review is the mapping setup section. This section allows you to map contact, item, payment, and custom fields between QuickBooks and QuoteWorks. Under Contacts, you can map the transaction bill to to the bill to or sold to contact in the QuoteWorks document. Under the Items section, you'll have quite a few options. The first is to determine which QuoteWorks field to use as the QuickBooks item name. By default in QuoteWorks, we use the manufacturer part number to write over to the item name. This is the unique identifier for an item in QuoteWorks and is the unique identifier for an item in QuickBooks. However, not every company uses manufacturer part numbers. Most of you do, but if you don't, that's okay. You can click on the drop down and change the option here. So if you want to use the vendor part number instead, or an internal part number, or one of those custom text fields that's going to have a part number, you can do that by selecting one of the other options. You'll have the option to auto generate a new part number if the QuoteWorks field is left blank. So if for some reason you select an internal part number and you try to export an item over to QuickBooks and the item field is left blank, then you have the option of not auto generating the part number or going ahead and auto generating using a macro. It is highly recommended you select this option because if an item is not mapped, if the mapping is left blank for an item, then it won't actually carry over to QuickBooks and it'll actually stop the export from happening until you resolve that issue. So we definitely recommend if you're not going to be using the default and recommended option of manufacturer part number, to go ahead and make your selection and then choose how you want it to be created based off of the macro. So maybe off the description of the item or something like that. You can see a list of the macros here by clicking the drop down. So if you wanted to use maybe the manufacturer, you could do that. You can also set what QuoteWorks fields you want to use to populate the QuickBooks description and PO description fields. And the QuickBooks items you would like to use for the discount items and charge items. You will notice the drop down list is populated from your products and services in QuickBooks. The Grouped Items section allows you to configure how you want your grouped items to be handled when passed into QuickBooks. You have the option to convert grouped items into a single item, and if you do this, you can set a tax code and select whether or not you want to include the group header as a comment. If you are not converting grouped items into a single item, you can choose to include a group header as a comment instead. Next is the Payment section. This is where we can map our payment methods from QuoteWorks to QuickBooks. So if you're using Quote Valet and you're receiving payments in Quote Valet, you want to make sure that you set up these mappings. You'll see on the left hand side that we have a list of our quote valet payment methods and then on the right side we have our QuickBooks payment method. So you just want to make sure that when you're selecting one of the options that you select the proper option for each payment method. That way it's going to carry over into QuickBooks properly. Luckily for me my mapping is complete so I can go ahead and click OK but if yours are not mapped you want to make sure you map those over. That way, when the payment comes from QuoteWorks and is exported to QuickBooks, the payment is going to match properly in QuickBooks. Same thing with mapping deposit accounts. You want to go ahead and map your deposit accounts, and if there's anything that's not set, you want to go ahead and make sure that you map those as well. Then we can also set a default, so if one's not mapped, we can use that one as our default setting and set. And the same thing for accounts receivable. We can set our default accounts receivable account as well.
Last but not least on this page are our custom fields. You'll see that on the left we display any QuickBooks custom fields. You can use the drop downs on the right to select the QuoteWorks fields to map them to. And that does it for the mappings page. As you've seen, there's a lot there, but it's all very important to understand. We'll hit OK to save our changes, and we'll navigate back to the QuickBooks Online settings page. The next section is the defaults section. Here the defaults are for your new items when you're exporting a document from QuoteWorks to QuickBooks Online. QuoteWorks will create any items for you that do not currently exist to help speed up that process. To make sure everything's coming over accurately, you have the option to set your default item types. You can set your defaults as service, inventory, or as non-inventory. For our example, since we sell mostly non-inventory parts, we're going to set that as our default. Now just because that's the default setting doesn't mean that's the only setting that you can use when exporting the document over to QuickBooks from QuickWorks and a new item is being created. You'll be prompted to be able to change and make those adjustments as necessary on a per item basis. These are just a few default settings that will be used for you to help speed things up. For our inventory items, we'll go ahead and say that this is going to be our cost of goods account, our asset account. We're just going to choose the first ones here, our income account, and then same thing, non-inventory, our purchased and sold. We'll say that you can say yes, and you can set your expense account and your sales accounts, and then the same thing with your service items. Are they purchased and sold? You'll be able to choose the expense account and the sales account. If you're unsure of any of these default settings, go ahead and speak with your accountant on which defaults you should have set. You can leave them blank as well, so if you want to come back and fill this out later, you can. It's not a required field. It just helps speed things up when you're exporting document items. We'll hit OK to save our changes and navigate back to the QuickBooks Online Settings page. The Items section is where you can connect directly to the QuickBooks item list in QuoteWorks, so if you want to be able to pull items from QuickBooks directly into QuoteWorks, you can do so by checking this box here. This will allow you to search and select items from QuickBooks product list directly into QuoteWorks. Advanced users can choose to display all QuickBooks accounts when creating new line items in QuickBooks Online. By default, only QuickBooks Online suggested accounts will be displayed. Lastly, the QuickBooks Online Info section will display information about your QuickBooks Online instance. This could be useful to review or share with support if troubleshooting an integration. Once you've made all your settings and mappings, go ahead and just take a quick view of all the different sections. Make sure you have all the settings the way you'd like, and if you do make any adjustments, make sure you save your settings by clicking OK. To start using the integration between QuoteWorks and QuickBooks, you can click on the QuickBooks icon on the standard toolbar. This will open that Export to QuickBooks window that we talked about, and you should see your settings of Display Unexported Orders with Document Status equal to Open. So this is showing only open orders available, and I can select if I want to do one or more documents and start exporting them over to QuickBooks. You might want to create a test document in QuoteWorks first and then export it to QuickBooks just to make sure everything is going over the way you'd like it to. If something is not going over properly during the test, simply go back into the setup and adjust your settings as necessary. One final note I'll make is that some changes will require you to log off and log in again for them to take effect. That being said, if you make an adjustment and don't see them immediately reflected, just log out, log back in, and they should be there. For more information, please visit the QuickBooks Online Setup Help File topic in our QuoteWorks Help File, or feel free to reach out to the tech support team at 407-248-1481.